Hello everyone, uh, my name is Bryn Antrim and I'm one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to be doing a workshop on APA, or American Psychological Association, formats um, for the reference page. Um, so let me go ahead and start the slides. This little guy over here, so it's not in the way. <clears throat> so, American Psychological Association format is used for sciences, history, um, some branches of communication, and it's one of several formats of citation that exist. They're created by different disciplines, by different professions, and they're created to suit the needs of that particular profession. Um, sometimes that's obvious, um, APA is the American Psychological Association. Sometimes it's less obvious, Modern Language Association is actually, or MLA, is used by many um, different disciplines in the humanities. There's the American Medical Association, that's a little obvious, but the Chicago Manual of Style or Turabian, less obvious. Um, so the format varies based on the audience that the paper is being written for. But the citation itself is incredibly important, and that's uh, twofold. One, it's important to make sure that you give people credit for the work when you use their work, um, otherwise it's plagiarism. The second is that so any readers that are going through your work can track where you got your information from um, and figure out how you drew your conclusions. So it's important for both of those reasons. So what we're going to do today is we're going to explore one of those formats, the American Psychological Association format. Um, and in order to do that, um, I'm going to show you a few things um, in searching as well as setting up your paper. So when you do my little face is getting in the way all over the place, no matter where I put it. OK, so in order to cite, you have to have something to cite. So we're going to start doing very short searches um, in the demonstration, just about three different databases to show you how to use those databases to quickly retrieve an article and to use the citation function within those databases. Um, you can get articles from anywhere. I recommend when you're doing academic research to start someplace where some of the evaluation has already been done for you and some of the gathering of sources has already begun. Save you some time and also get you um, more authoritative and academic information. And so I would recommend starting at the Santa Monica College Library homepage, going into databases, and choosing one based on your topic. And we're going to do this in the demonstration. I've also put up here a link to a video tour of the Santa Monica College Library homepage. SMC Library has its own YouTube channel. Um, I uh, recommend, in order to find it, that you just Google Santa Monica College Library YouTube. Don't Google SMC YouTube or you're going to get St. Mary's College, <laughs> so spell out Santa Monica College. And then just YouTube um, and library, because the college as, as a whole also has its own YouTube, and we're under that umbrella. But this specific link, if you take a screen cap, will take you to a tour of the library homepage. Um, once you're at the databases, you pick a database, you find an article, and you request the database's attempt at a citation. And I say this because it's a bot creating the citation, not a human, and oftentimes bots mess up a little, so I'm going to show you how to fix that so that the references that you turn in are perfect. So you place those uh, attempts at a citation into a Word document, fix it, and then format your page and references according to APA requirements. So what are APA requirements? Well, in general, and I'm just going to, this is the equivalent of electronically of me walking back and forth in front of the class. <laughs> For the um, paper overall, um, the margins of your entire paper have to be one inch um, top and bottom, left and right. And this is normal margin width in Word. Um, you have to use the font Times New Roman, and it must be in 12-point size. The entire paper must be double-spaced, 
and you want to go in, and I'll show you how to do this, into the page formatting and look at the before and after boxes to make sure that they both read zero. Default in Word tends to be eight points after each line, which leads to strange line spacing and extra spaces. And your text must be aligned left. A lot of times people like to use justifying spacing because it looks neat. It goes from one margin to the other. The problem is, once you look at the words and not just the page, it doesn't look neat at all. Justified spacing leaves very large and uneven spaces between words, and um, it's okay if your page is ragged on the right-hand margin, as long as it's lined up on the left-hand margin. That's actually, actually the way it's supposed to be. Now, once you finish writing the text of your paper and you're writing your references page, you, this page has to start on a new page. So if you're writing a six-page paper and there's only two lines on your sixth page, you still have to start your references on page seven. Okay? Um, and this page follows all of the previous requirements, has to be double-spaced, use times, new Roman, font size 12, one-inch margins all the way around. At the top of the page, you're going to center the word references. Don't underline it or bold it or use italics or a different font or make it pretty or make it big. It needs to look exactly like every other word on that page. If there's only one entry, call it reference, logically, since you're only using one. And then each reference within that page must include a hanging indent. And I'll show you how to go to the paragraph settings in Word, select indentation, click special, select hanging. It's a process and I'll show you how to do it. Um, it's important that the reference page looks different than the body of the text, and that's because when you look at the content of an article, oftentimes it'll either be block spaced or the first line will be indented and every other line will be lined up at the left margin. When you get to the references page, that flips and the first line goes to the left margin and every other line is a half inch indented underneath it lined up looks kind of like a skillet with a handle and this gives a visual cue to people who are reading through papers that this is when the content switches to the references um, and it's a very strong visual clue so a lot of times people are just looking for references and they'll know okay here's where the paper stops now i can look at what's been cited or they're just interested in the paper and they're not necessarily that interested in the references, they just want to read the content, um, they'll know flipping through it, oh, here's where it stops, it's only eight pages long, I can do that, right? So that's why you go from a standard to a hanging indent. Now I've mentioned a couple of times, I'm uh, virtually walking across the room again here, I've mentioned a few times that um, word is preferred um, or use Word, or in Word you do this. And the reason for that is, while we don't require people to use Word, we highly recommend people to use Word, and that's for a few reasons. One, um, Word is very widely used um, in business and in education. So if you know how to use it, that will be a skill that you can take on with you. Another reason is that it interfaces very well with Canvas. So if you uh, submit a Word document in Canvas, you retain all of your formatting. Um, oftentimes, if you submit a document from Google Docs, you lose your formatting, and then if you're in the Library One Research Methods class, you lose points. And if you're in English One, you could lose points. So, <coughs> excuse me. So Word is um, the preferred software, and a lot of times students will be like, "But I don't want to buy Word. I, I have a Mac, or you know, I've never used Word. I'm better with this other program." I don't want to spend the money on more software. I don't have that money. You don't have to spend money on it. Santa Monica College has made access to the entire micro, most of the Microsoft Office suite available to you as a Santa Monica College student for free. Um, and I put the URL here because this is actually kind of hard to find on the Santa Monica College site. Ever since the redesign, that's, that's happened to a few things. So I um, put this up here so that you can make a screen cap and go directly to this URL to gain access to it. The other thing that you can do is you can Google Santa Monica College Word Students or Santa Monica College Office Students, um, and that should take you to this page. But you have the URL. Okay. 
As an SMC student, you have free access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, OneDrive, and if you care, Teams. You also get a terabyte of uh, cloud file storage in your SMC Student OneDrive. You have access to these applications on your mobile devices. And importantly, you have the ability to set up the full Office 365 on up to five other devices, or five devices, PCs or Macs, either one. So please do take advantage of this. Um, while you're a student, you might as well take advantage of every piece of software that we make available to you. And this is one that you're going to need to use later on in life. And a lot at SMC. If you decide, well, really, I want to use Google Docs. I like Google Docs. Everything's on my Google Drive. You can format your reference page on Google Docs um, and do it correctly. There are a lot of steps to it. So I have created a video for my class that show that walks through how to do it. The video is for MLA formatting, but the way that the references are laid out using the page formatting and the hanging indent, etc., is the same between MLA and APA. The differences in MLA and APA are how the actual references or citations are constructed, not how they're formatted. So if you watch this video, it will show you how to format things in Google Docs. This is not on the YouTube channel. This is a video that I created for my class. So um, if you would like to use it, please take a screen cap so that you can go directly to it. Now it is time. Whoops. See, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now it is time for the demonstration. And um, I'm going to be stopping sharing and then resharing because for some reason my PC sticks on whatever it's sharing first and never shows anything after that. So I apologize for the back and forth. Also, many of you might be watching this workshop in order to get extra credit. Um, in order to do that, you need a code word. And the code word for this workshop is history. And I used history for the code word because the discipline of history uses the APA format style a lot, most often, extensively. And also because we're going to be using a, um, a subject from history as the topic for our demonstration. So the code word for this workshop is history. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a second. And I'm going to go in to the web. And, yep, that didn't work. Please ignore my email glitch. So, <clears throat> walking back and forth in front of you, virtually. In order to get to the library from the college homepage, I'm going to move this up a little bit so you can see the address bar. There are a couple of ways to do it. One way is just to go to the college homepage, add a slash, and add library. That is the short URL that will take you directly to the library. But in case you forget that, here is the long way to go to get there. Under menu, scroll down to student support and click on the plus sign next to it. And under academic support, go down alphabetically to the library between counseling and tutoring, and that will also bring you to the library homepage. Now, if you get stuck when you first get here, we have an Ask Us that will pop out, and you can chat with us 24-7. It's not loading. That's unusual. There we go. Um, you can chat with a librarian um, anytime, day or night. Uh, we are part of an international consortium of librarians that provide service to all of our various students and patrons. So um, if it's during time when the library would normally be open, like Monday through Friday or Saturday morning, you'll get hold of a Santa Monica College librarian. But any time that you use this chat, you will contact a college or university librarian. Always. It's not a bot. It's a person. The other place that you can ask for help, I'm going to close Pearl. The other place that you can ask for help is down here. Under databases, you can ask a librarian here as well. 
and it is embedded in the interfaces of many of our databases. While we're here, before we do the search, I want to show you a couple of links. One is the workshops and videos link. Um, our previous workshops and our YouTube channel are linked here. This video will also be linked here. We also have research guides and for APA, in order to get help with APA citation, you would head into the research guides, scroll down to citation styles, and click on APA style. The front page of the APA citation page gives you some links to various places that help. And the second link under the APA style guide is sample references. So if you have, um, if you're doing your, your references and you get a little stuck, here are some examples of how you do it. And I'm going to leave this up for uh, um, later because I'm actually going to use this. Right now I'm, I'm being a student, so I'm going to show you how I would do it as a student. So in order to actually have something to cite, to use as a reference, you have to have something to use as a reference. So we're going to head into databases, and I'm going to do three short um, database searches. When you head into databases, you have the option of looking at all of the databases listed alphabetically by title with a short description of what's in each one. Looking by format, looking only for ebooks, oftentimes your instructors will require a book, or it's broken down by topic, as you can see. I'm going to go into all databases because I'm going to show you a database that is general, a little bit of everything, that is discipline specific, that is only about history and that is format specific, that is only journals. So there are many different databases because they have different specialities. Okay. So when I head into all databases, I'm going to go into Academic Search and Master Mock Complete. This is a general database that has a little bit of everything and it's often your first stop, but I wouldn't recommend it being your only stop. I always recommend that you try several different databases um, in order to get a diverse array of resources for your research. So many of you might be familiar with this database. Um, if you have not yet logged in, you have to do so. This is because the databases um, only allow access to SMC students and staff, faculty and administrators. You have to be an SMC person to use SMC resources. Okay. So use your Canvas logon. And when it comes up, if, this, if I were doing um, uh, how to do the search, this would be much longer, but I'm focusing on gathering and formatting re references today. Our YouTube channel does have a video on how to use academic search. So if you want to go in depth on how to use this um, more appropriately, then please view that video. So today I'm going to look for the Trail of Tears, which was the forced relocation of the Cherokee Nation um, in the 1830s. So say I'm in History 10 and this is my topic. I search for that and this gives me a number of different options including periodicals which are popular, they're not academic, they're things like um, magazines and newsletters. It gives me books and it gives me academic journals. Now if again if I were going into the database I would show you a lot more about how to narrow my search but I'm just going to pick one because I want to really focus on how to gather and create citations. So when I go into this article, it gives me a great deal of information, including the abstract. And then over here, it allows me to do things like email it and save it. And also, it allows me to ask the database to give me an example citation for this. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are a lot of different citation formats, including international ones. So be careful when you use this that you ask for the APA citation and don't end up with the American Medical Association instead. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to open up a Word document and I'm just going to paste that in there. Paste. Thank you. And I'm going to leave it just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to find another article. 
So I'm going to go back to the library databases. And the next one I'm going to pick is discipline specific. It is only about history, and it's called America, History, and Life. And when I go in there, you'll notice it looks very much like the other one because they're both published by the same people, but they cover different journals. One covers a little bit of everything, one just covers history. They might have a little bit of overlap, but not very much. So here I'm going to try Trail of Tears again and see what I get. Now if this were real research, it would be like an hour that I've been going through articles. But again, this is just a demo, so it's quick. We have more periodicals, we have book reviews, but we also have an academic journal. So I'm going to go with that. Once again, it tells me about it, gives me an abstract telling me about the article, and over here allows me to cite it. The actual article is in a PDF attached to this. So if I ask it to cite it, again, I scroll down to APA, I highlight and copy that, I go back to Word, I paste it in, leave it exactly as it is, and I go back and I find another article. Heading back to the databases, the third database that I'm going to show you is format specific. It's called JSTOR, and it has a very strong collection in the humanities, including history, but everything in this database is a scholarly journal or book. So you won't find newsletters and magazines and newspapers, just journals. So, um, yes, please proceed. I hate pop-ups. So if I tell it Trail of Tears here, notice the search fields, the interface looks different because it's published by a different, by a different group. It's published by JSTOR. I search that. And notice it gives me journals, book chapters, and research reports. I don't want necessarily images, I just want journals, and again, there is a video on how to search JSTOR up on the Santa Monica College Library YouTube. So I'm just going to pick one. Again, the interface looks very different. The site is here. So this actually allows me to copy it, which is nice. It also gives me something else that I want to point out. Here, it says DOI and gives me a bunch of numbers. This is the digital object identifier. If you look at the MLA, it gives me a URL. The difference between these two is a URL is attached to the database. So if I find this one article in JSTOR, it'll have one URL. In um, Academic Search, it'll have a different URL. In American History and Life, it will have a different URL. However, they will all have the same digital object identifier. A DOI is like a fingerprint for an article. It, it, it is attached to that article, and it doesn't matter if you find it in a database, an open access journal on the web, wherever you find it, that DOI will not change. And that's why the DOI is preferred over the URL. Because remember, the second reason for, for having a references list is so that whoever is reading your work can track back to where you got your information from. And if they don't have access to JSTOR, the URL for JSTOR is not going to do them any good. But if they have the DOI, they can perhaps find it in some other database or other source that they do have access to. So the DOI is important. So I'm going to add that also to my list here. And I now have my three citations. So I'm going to stop my searching and I'm going to look at formatting my references page now. The first thing I'm going to do for all of these, you'll notice they're in different fonts, they're different sizes, some of them have um, highlighting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to use the little eraser up here to clear all formatting. Because if you try to apply new formatting on top of old formatting, you get a mess. So first you need to clear, clean it off, and then apply the correct formatting to the top. Then I want to make sure that I have all of the pieces correctly. So when I go back here 
and I take a look at my sample reference citations. For an academic journal, I notice that it is not all in capitals. It's capital and then small, capital and then small, capital and then small. So I'm going to go back to my references here, and I'm going to change all of those capitals that I don't want into capitals with small letters after them. This one is correct. Okay. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and take a look and say, okay, the journal title and the volume have to be in italics. So I go back to my page and I say, this is the journal title, here's the volume, put that in italics. Here is my journal title, there's my volume, put it in italics. Here is my, wow, really long article of uh, article title, really short journal title, and my volume number in italics. Okay. Go back to my uh, template, to my example, and the reason why I keep going back to the example is because I want to bring something to your attention. Oftentimes, your teachers will give you example citations, and they may not be exactly like APA says to do them or MLA says to do them. Follow your teacher's examples, because that's how they're going to be grading you. It doesn't necessarily matter if you do it exactly the way APA says it, if your teacher uses an APA guide that has it slightly differently, and that's what they're using to grade you. So always go by whatever your teacher gives you, and if your teacher doesn't give you anything, go to APA in order to get the correct way to do it. Okay. So <clears throat> we have author last name, first initial, date, article title. Notice the article title is not in quotes. It's just sitting there all on its own. Notice also that the article title does not have capitals in all of the words except the first one, which is different from some other citation formats. So then it has journal title and volume in italics, which you already did, the pages, and a DOI if, we ha if it has one. And notice there is no period at the end of the DOI. So these are all details that you have to pay attention to when you're doing your page. So let's take a look at ours and see if it follows that. Here is author, date, title of the article, Columbia is capitalized because it's a proper name, date uh, or uh, journal title, volume, number, pages, it doesn't have a DOI, it wasn't given. So if my teacher requires one, I would have to go back and find a DOI for that. If it doesn't have a DOI, leave it blank. Not everything has a DOI. The second one also looks correct as I go through it. The third one also looks correct, except it has all of the title um, words all of the major title words capitalized, which works in MLA, not in APA. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to change those to be correct. Trail of Tears is another um, proper name, so it is again all capitalized. A is the first word in the subtitle, so it stays capitalized, but all of the words after that are not. So this is an example of how the database didn't get it right. The database did capitalizing as if it were an MLA instead of APA. So you have to fix it before you turn it in. Now the last thing, and again, these have periods after, after the page numbers, but the DOI does not have a period after it. So before I apply the whole formatting for the page, I want to make sure that everything's in alphabetical order. And it's not quite. This one goes first. And that will put them in alphabetical order by author's last name. Okay. If there is no author, you put them in alphabetical order by the title, but most academic journal articles do have authors. So, Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight everything and I'm going to apply um, the reference citation format. I need to make sure that they are up here, that they are in Times New Roman font. I need to make sure that it is size 12. 
and then I need to make sure that it is left justified. So it's aligned to the left margin. Notice over here how it kind of goes in and out. That's fine. This is what's important. It's all lined up on the, um, on the left margin. Okay. Then I want to put a hanging indent in there because two of these go onto the second line. And if it goes on past the first line, it must have a hanging indent. And the way you do that is under your paragraph settings. And your paragraph settings are where you make sure there's no extra lines between things and that you have a hanging indent and that you are double spaced. So when I go into paragraph settings, I first look at the general one. Yes, it's aligned left just as it should. When I look at the indentation, there's no indentation left or right. It goes directly to the margin. And under special, I need to change it to hanging indent. <coughs> and it defaults to one half inch. And finally, I need to look at the line spacing. And the line spacing is completely off. Before is okay, there's no extra lines added, but there's eight points added after each line, which we do not want. So we change that to zero, so that there's no extra line spacing. That screws up your page formatting. And the line spacing itself must be double. No weird multiples. And when I apply that, I click OK. Suddenly it looks much more like a references page. The last thing that we have to do before this is complete is we need to add a title. It's not any extra spaces or anything. There's a header at the top um, that runs through the entire paper, but we do need the title references. References. <laughs> Spell it right. And unlike everything else on the page, this has to be centered. So it is center aligned and done. So you have your title at the top, you have one inch margins all the way around, it's in Times New Roman font size 12, it's double spaced. Ooh, and this is interesting. I missed this. The italics have to be added to the journal title and volume. That's the other nice thing is by going through and making sure you've done everything in one final check after you think you're done, you'll find those things you missed. It's in alphabetical order, and all of the information is there. Okay. So that's how you retrieve articles, have the database help you with the beginning of the citation, fix the citation based on the templates that you were given by your instructor or by APA via the library reference guide, and finally apply both reference and page formatting so that it is correct in APA format. Last things before we leave, remember that your code word for this um, particular workshop is history. And if you have any questions, ask a librarian anytime, day or night. I hope you found this workshop helpful. Be well.